Hey there, horror movie tea sippers. The following podcast episode will contain spoilers for the movie we are about to review. If you have not seen the movie and do not wish to have anything ruined prematurely, please do not continue to watch or listen until you have seen the movie. And welcome to the Horror Movie Tea Podcast. Today we are covering Paranormal Activity, which I can't believe we haven't covered yet. I can't either. <laughs> so we I had to we had. we had to correct that. Yes. Um, but before we go into the review, let's grab our cups and talk about tea. So I am drinking the Crown, the Queen's Afternoon Tea. Um, if you did not catch before, unfortunately, this collection is uh, discontinued. But um, it has uh, black tea, sweet blackberry leaves, and honey and vanilla flavors. And I will find the closest version on the Republic of Tea site and link it below. And I am drinking Republic of Tea's Passion Fruit Papaya, A Moment in the Sun tea. And it has black tea, sunflower petals, natural passion fruit, papaya, and natural pineapple flavor. And thank you to the Republic of Tea for allowing us to continue to do what we love. And for our spoopy tea sippers out there, or spoony, <laughs> if you're spooky or spoony, <laughs> brew yourself a cup of tea, sit back, relax, and we hope you enjoy the review. So... I, I think most of us already know the summary, but in case you didn't or need a refresher, uh, this this new newish couple move in with each other, and at some point it's revealed that uh, she has been followed by an entity, and so he thinks it'd be a great idea to buy a bunch of cameras and document this one. Or one. There's camera. only one camera. Yeah, one camera. Um, and as as this is going, he's almost like antagonizing it and trying to like he's trying to get it to do stuff. And she's like, no, no. But of course, he doesn't listen. And it it slowly escalates. Yes, to where she gets possessed, kills him, and then disappears into the night. But yes. So for entertainment, I will say. That the rating is probably because of uh, some level of nostalgia glasses. Because I will say, at the time, whenever I watched this movie for the first time, which is because of you, I think that was for like a birthday party or something. Something like that. It was like a bunch of college friends. We were all like, anyways. Um... And when I watched it, it scared the crap out of me. Like, that was a genuine... Like, watching it for the first time, it was a genuinely terrifying experience because it felt so real. And, you know, it was really the only popular found footage movie before Paranormal Activity was The Blair Witch Project. And Which was so shaky. Yes. Yeah. Um... So it's like, and the, this movie is so simple, too. It uses mm -hmm. practical effects. And, you know, if if you want to analyze a movie, you can see all of the different ways that they did what they did. But if you just allow yourself to be engrossed in the movie and in that situation and believe that the documentary style means that's, like, more realistic or whatever, then it really sucks you in and is genuinely terrifying um so i personally give it like oh man this is hard uh, i I'm, i'll say an eight because there are better horror movies out there but this is one that i oh man or do i want to do a 7.75 Oh uh, no! I'm gonna stick with an eight. It's like there, there's some other ones that are around an eight, and I'm like, ugh. but anyways, um, yeah, I'm gonna just stick with an eight, just because. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> uh, 
it did have a very profound fe- effect on me at that time. And even watching it now, I love the simplicity of the movie. Like, they didn't make it a whole thing. And, like, the movies later down the line. Um, it's like, it doesn't need to be a complicated movie. And it's so effective. And I really wish that... Um, I forgot which studio bought Paranormal Activity. But I, I really wish that the studio that bought it hadn't made them... Um, reshoot the final scene like yeah that that's the one thing that i don't like but Mm -hmm. i don't take that away from my rating because i know there's an original ending that was Mm -hmm. far better um now i think because doesn't she get i think she gets shot in the in the original ending because i remember the police come but i don't remember if she like gets killed or not i'm pretty sure she dies yeah, so it's like if if that was the case, that probably takes away the possibility of a sequel. Yeah, but still, it's like just have movies like that, but different people in mm-hmm. different situations. It's like, but now that they had it set up that way, they're like, oh, let's just rehash similar situations over and over again and just expand on the lore. But yeah. but have a lot of plot holes and make it not make sense. Just Mm-hmm. But so, um, but yeah, but the fact that this is such a simple setup and the effects are simple but very effective, like this is a really solid horror movie in that regard. It's just, I feel like nowadays it gets a lot of um, criticism because of all the movies following it. It's like, I think by now we are very tired of found footage movies. Yes. Because not only did a bunch of paranormal uh, series series movies come out from that, but a whole bunch of other found footage movies, mm-hmm. and we're like, okay, enough is enough. <laughs> so, but it's like looking at the movie itself and the impact it had at the time. I think, I think it was awesome. But yeah, that's all I got. Okay, I give it a seven point five. I would like to give it higher, but I know if I did, it would be because of Nostalgia Glasses. I'm allowing Nostalgia Glasses to win this time. In actuality, I'd probably rate it like a 7.75. But, yeah. Yeah. I still love this movie. I have loved it since it came out. And you scared the shit out of me with it. I watched it first (laughs) with my mom and sister because they love horror movies as well. And I remember us all just, like, crowding on the couch and, like, holding on to each other (laughs) and being terrified watching this. And it was great. And we loved it. (laughs) And then I scared the crap out of you. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and you scared the crap out of Steven. He had nightmares after he watched that movie. Really? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So good job on that. Yes. (laughs) Um. But it is a a very interesting movie. It's a very different kind of movie than, well, at the time when it came out. Um, Really, like Alyssa said, the only one that had really come out similar to this around the same time period that anyone really remembers anymore is (laughs) Blair Witch. And that one messed with people's motion sickness and was so shaky and was hard to tell what was going on and I'm sure we'll probably get to that movie at some point but (laughs) this one the camera on the whole was steady you could tell what was going on and there was a clear direction and escalation of things yeah so it wasn't all convoluted or lost in translation or anything. You didn't have to watch it multiple times to understand what was going on. It was just a very straightforward, haunting kind of movie. And they had such varied mm-hmm. scenes of the haunting. Yes. Because it's like, of course, they had like the door back and forth. But like the scene, the two scenes that get me is where you see the footprints. Mm-hmm. And then when you see her upstairs and the her hair moving because it's breathing yes. on her, like so those effective. were good. Also, the um, getting pulled out of bed and dragged down the hall. Yeah, oh, that's so the scene that freaked me out. Yeah, 
That and the footprints. Those are the ones that really freaked me out. And the Ouija board, which was just (laughs) him being dumb. They were warned against it and told not to use it. And he was stupid. Yeah. Like, I will say... (sighs) They, it, I want your opinion on this. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like, um, oh man, I should know the girl's character's name. Katie. Thank you. I feel like Katie is pretty realistic, mm-hmm. but uh, Mika, I feel like he was a little bit too exaggerated. He's like a little bit too much of a douchebag and wanting to like antagonize it. But I'm. I don't know. I don't know. I I've met people like him, so yeah. It's like, and, and if you re- I mean, meet the right person, but it's like, what what a worst case scenario for her to yeah. like be dating him, and then like this is the person that wants to like talk to the entity. Yeah, yeah, not good. Like I, he was doing a lot of it from a place of love, and he wanted to protect her. And he wanted to figure out... I mean, he was a fixer. He wanted to fix the yeah. problem. I feel like some of it was out of curiosity, too. Yeah, like he wanted definitely. To know. It was different and yeah. weird. And he was just trying to figure out what the heck was going on. But he also did want to protect her. Yeah. So, I get it. Yep, but... Yeah. Realism is a tough one. Yes. So, you know, as someone who is a skeptic, I, or, okay, whenever I'm rating, or whenever I'm rating this, I'm putting my skepticism aside and doing it if I believed in, like, demons and ghosts and stuff like that. Um... So it's like, as far as like the characters go, there are some cheesy scenes that I feel like are a little bit forced, but overall their interactions with each other are pretty good. And the the fact that it's found footage and they're like, quote unquote, filming their everyday lives, that kind of like compounds the uh, relational like buildup and kind of flushes it out and makes it feel more like tangible. Um... Hmm. And then it's like their reactions to the hauntings are like pretty. Mika's. I mean, he maybe it's just that the type of person he is, but some of his reactions, I'm still like, mm, not quite buying it. But the, but he does have some general, uh, genuinely like realistic feeling reaction. Then of course, like Katie, she she's just awesome in that mm-hmm. role. Um. I think I'm going to go with a 3.5. It's like I'm kind of dancing between... Like, I'm dancing between a 3.5 and a 4.5. Because it's like, in some regards, I can see how it's really realistic. Because obviously, it was realistic enough that they made it, like, documentary style. And made it, like, the whole point of that movie is to make it feel like it was real. Mm -hmm. And so there was a level of realism, a part of it, but at the same time, there's just a few things that, mm, uh, okay. I'm going to meet myself in the middle and say a four. Um, but yeah, it's like the dynamics of the relationship. Um, really the only thing that takes it down the most for me is, um, Mika and um, some of his reactions. Only some of them. But I know you will probably mention the fire and some of the issues with like the photographs still being there. Because like the, especially when they're like, oh, everything was gone. And then the photograph magically appears. It's like, what? And it the photograph really wasn't that badly damaged. It wasn't. It's like the demon's like, I'm going to put that up in my yep. pocket and mm-hmm. just save it for later. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. 
And I'm sure you'll mention the fire marshal or, or the fire like investigation because yeah. I know that's something you've brought up. So mm-hmm. I'm going to save those for you. Um. So yeah, that's what I got. So I give it a three. As a non-skeptic. So my biggest hang up apart from a couple of the reactions from the the main people which again Katie was awesome and for the most part Mika did really really well um there were just a few things that he could have done a little better on um apart from that they had said that this thing had followed her no matter where she went like it would start up after a little bit, whenever she would go someplace new. And this was a thing that happened all her life. So why was it escalating just now? Well, from my understanding is that... Because she was saying it kind of ebbed and flowed like back and forth and whenever they moved in together that's when it started to go back up Mm -hmm. and like if they had just ignored it and gone like with their everyday lives then it would have ebbed and flowed again but because he specifically got the camera they're calling like a spiritualist they were got a Ouija board he was antagonizing that I feel like it was pretty it was a hundred percent Mika's fault (laughs) Him trying to help made the situation 100% worse. I don't know. I feel like it still should have escalated a lot sooner than that in her life. So it just felt a little random. Yeah, like... like, Why would it just randomly go away? Yeah, like, they could have done a bit better with, like, actually establishing Mm -hmm. a stronger build-up. Yeah. And a reason is, like, why would it build up then? Instead of saying it ebbs and flows, just say, this is a thing that happens all the time. I don't think anything of it because it's normal for me. And because he started poking at it. Poking the bear, so to speak. (laughs) It got ticked off and was like, okay, you know what? (laughs) Yeah, it's like that, that, yeah, then making that simple change and being like, I've had activity follow me all my life. Mm-hmm. It's like, it creeps me out. I hate it. I don't I try like to it. ignore it. But it's like, it's like I've been living with it. And then he's like, oh, that's really interesting and wants to document it. Mm-hmm. And then immediately it starts like increasing. And so that way there's a direct correlation. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Also, they were told a couple of times to stop giving it attention and quit filming it and all, and he refuses for no reason. And she lets him continue to film and try his experiments and all. Like, if she's as terrified as she keeps trying to say she is, yeah. then she would not have allowed him to continue with his experiments or filming. Just saying. And honestly... If it got to the point where he was absolutely refusing and she was that terrified, she could just, like, stay in a hotel or stay at a friend's. And it's like, I know the activity would follow her, but that way he's not antagonizing Mm -hmm. it because it's literally right where she is. Yes. Yeah. So, it's just, some of it felt a little bit forced. Just a tiny bit. Um... Most of the effects were decent. The fire thing, yeah, with it showing up, they did kind of explain that in the second movie. Yeah, but it's like... some of the stuff did survive. But the thing is, like, I was rating it on when this movie was originally made, it's supposed to be a yeah. standalone movie. I agree. I'm glad that they addressed it, though, yeah. in the second movie. It is appreciated. It does feel a bit out of place in the first movie, having not seen the second movie, or if you haven't seen the second movie, rather, that 
she's like everything was supposed to have been destroyed in the fire and then there's this picture that's barely touched that's in their attic yeah like i think that the, i'm sure they're trying to do that to make mm-hmm. it extra creep factor yeah but for for us <laughs> rational like it, everything has to make sense it's yeah. just like a little yeah yeah questionable mm-hmm. so it's just little things like that it I feel like also if she was as terrified and at that point he was terrified too um, of having to call the demonologist and not being able to get a hold of him, I feel like she would have tried harder to either get a hold of him or someone else in those circles. Yeah, and I... if This isn't necessarily a realism thing, but I find it really frustrating that they waited so goddamn long to call him. Yes. Yeah, no, she could have easily been like, no, I'm calling him. You can still do your experiment, but I'm calling him. Yeah. And the, and Mika being like, oh, don't, don't call him. They're kooks, blah, 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 blah. It's like, you literally have paranormal activity going on in your near house. You have proof right there. So why aren't you giving them these quote unquote experts more... Mm -hmm. Uh, give them a little bit more credit. Mm -hmm. And him saying over and over, I'm going to handle it. I'm going to take care of it. No, you're not. Yeah, all you're doing is filming and yelling at it. You have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. And he didn't even look up, like, ways to get rid of demons or anything. Like, he didn't try sage. He didn't try, like, anything. There was next to no research apart from the Ouija board. Yeah, the Ouija board, and then whenever he saw, like, the the other person that had, like, died from a demon possession. Which he got from the Ouija board. Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay, sorry, I thought, um, yeah. Um, But, yeah, it's like, if he's going to take care of it, he could have had a whole list to be like, okay, let's try all of these things. Yep. Didn't even try sage or salt or anything. No, nope, let's no let's call let's call a a priest in or someone to bless the house. You right? No cleansing, nothing. I'm surprised Katie hadn't tried any of yeah. that. Mm-hmm. There's no talk about that. None. None whatsoever. So it's like like they could have easily mentioned, "Oh, I've tried this before, and it still was happening." Yeah, it's like on the one hand. This movie being so simple makes it really effective. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it's a little bit too simple in some areas where it kind of like almost creates plot holes for itself. It helps and hurts it. Yeah. So, but it is a very good movie and highly recommended. (laughs) Yes, highly recommend. And have all the lights out. And, and a bowl of popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> well, unless a few jump easily, because then you might lose your popcorn. <laughs> and just be ready to clean it up. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, I definitely uh, agree with you that it's worth a watch. It's a really good, solid movie. It is uh, still top tier as, found, yes. as far as like not just found footage, but like horror movies in general. And the effects, as simple as most of them were, they hold up. Yeah. They don't really date the movie. Yeah, because it's mostly practical effects, yeah. it will hold up. Now, the camera itself, when they show it in the mirror, kind of dates the movie a little bit. Just a little bit. Well, it's like, I'm like, how much money did he spend on this camera? It's yeah. absolutely ginormous. Like, it looks like a legit, like, filming camera. Yes. But... Yeah. And of course, they they make those jokes every movie after that of it's so light. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for joining us today. And uh, oh man, this is our Halloween episode. So happy Halloween, everybody! <laughs> we uh, wish you lots of spoops and scares, and but a safe holiday. Uh, celebrations safe and fun safe and fun yes but 
Thank you for joining us today and let us know what you thought of the movie. If you'd like to recommend a movie, game, or tea, you can leave us a comment or join our Discord server. And if you'd like to keep up to date with our content, you can find our link tree listed below. And if you'd like to support us monetarily, we have our Teespring and PayPal, or we have our affiliate link with Republic of Tea available. It does not affect the price of the tea, but it does allow us to continue to do what we love. And you can find all of the sites mentioned linked below. But until the next time, guys, stay safe and stay spoopy. Bye! Bye.